Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and today's video is on plumbing. Well, the exact topic we're going to be looking at today is installing one of these. This is a toilet siphon if you didn't know what it was. So one of the toilets is broke here at the centre so I thought I'd do a little video on how to replace the toilet siphon. So, as usual on these videos, let's stop waffling and let's just get on with changing a toilet siphon. Come on then. Now, how do we actually know there's something wrong with this siphon? So, if you're uh, pulling the handle and it's coming up and nothing's happening, there's every chance the siphon is broken. Now, first thing we need to do is turn the water off. So we've got a gate valve here. Now, you might have to do this at the stop tap under your kitchen sink or wherever it is. Or you might have a, a service valve or a bottle fix valve just at the side of the toilet. We've actually got a gate valve which shouldn't be there because this is on high pressure. But we didn't install this toilet. And also you can see this pipe work's going to need a little bit of an adjustment because uh, the cistern is hanging off the wall. So we need to get this water out. So the easiest way of doing it because even though I'm pumping it, it isn't getting rid of it. So the easiest way is by using a cup and a dishcloth. Now I've got a plastic cup here because you don't really want to be using a pot one because you might smash it. And it's just a matter of <laughs> tipping the water down the toilet. Sometimes it's handy having a toilet, isn't it? Well, there you go. It's going to take a while. So I'll get back to you when uh, I've got rid of all the water. Now, while Derek's uh, bailing out the water from the cistern, I'll try and explain to you how a siphon actually works. It's incredibly easy. Now, in the bell, there is a plastic washer called a diaphragm. And it's a one-way diaphragm. So what happens is, this is the level of the water within the toilet system. So we've got an air bubble here. So when you flush the chain, it pulls up the diaphragm, which forces the water over the siphon. And then as the water comes back down then, the weight of the water continues it to fall through siphonic action. So the water will go, as you pull the lever up, up over the top, out through the bottom and will start emptying the system. Now, when it gets to an air hole, for the want of a better word, where it allows air in, it will break the siphon. So this is what we're gonna give you the six, three and nine liters, is the hole where it allows the air to come in to break the siphonic action. It's as simple as that. So if there's anything wrong with this diaphragm, it won't create the suction to, able, to be able to force the water over the top to allow the weight of the water then to empty the system. I hope that helps. So we've gone as uh, far as we can now with the plastic cup. We need to change now to the dishcloth. It's just a matter of getting the cloth into the bottom. And again, Bringing it out. Now there are three types of toilet system. There's a high level toilet system, which would have been around in Thomas Crapper's time. He was the guy, they say he invented the toilet, he didn't invent the toilet, he kind of put it all into mass production. Um, so that's why in the UK we say we're going for a crap. It's not a swear word, 
it was just slang because it used to say on the toilet system the Thomas Crapper Company. So that's where the term going for a crap comes from. So it's not swearing. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so that's the high level system. This, what I've got here, is actually the low level system. So what they used to think was we needed the head pressure to get rid of our number twos. And then they suddenly decided, oh, we can make it a bit lower. So they came with the low level. And then today's toilets now are mainly what we call close couple toilets, where the actual cistern sits on top of the pan. And I'll show you the difference in a minute once I've got rid of all this water. Um, that this has a flush pipe taking the water from the cistern to the back of the WC. So we need a different toilet as well as a system for this. So this water's nearly out there. So nearly all out now. important that we get most of the water out because we are going to be removing the siphon from the cistern while it's still on the wall but if it was a close coupled toilet we would actually be removing the cistern but I'll talk about those later once we've uh, got this out and removed it. So the next step now is actually removing the siphon from the cistern. So like I said, the next thing I need to do is remove this flush pipe. So this is what makes it a low level toilet, having this white flush pipe here. So it's dead straightforward, all I've got to do is undo the nut here. And then take it off the back of the toilet and pull it out. So that's the flush pipe out. And now all I've got to do is get my grips on here and actually undo this big nut and then the full siphon will come out. So we'll do that next. So this is the reason why you don't use a gate valve on mains cold water because you can see the water's been dripping in. So I've had to cable tie up the float valve to stop the water coming in. So never use a gate valve on high pressure. You need to use a high pressure valve, a service valve or a lever valve. Ball of fixed valve, not a gate valve. Got to get all that water out again now. So I've got my grips to our water pump players to undo the big nut underneath here. So it's just a matter of getting on the big nut, slacking the big nut off, and just keeping my hand pushed down on the Top of the siphon, while well, I undo the nut. Well, I get a bit of excess water coming out here now, and now I can just undo it from the hook, from the flood pipe. Put a towel down here, catching all the water. So now, <laughs> remove the old siphon, and I can actually see exactly what's wrong with it. So let's have a closer look and see what's wrong with this. Have a look at the new one, look at the differences, and let's get them swapped over. So, you can see there's not much left of that washer. Let me just compare it to the new one. So you can now see the difference with the new one compared to the old one. There's a full washer. So let's look at these major differences between the two. Now, first of all, this one is a built-in overflow. So it's basically the height of the siphon here so it technically doesn't need an overflow it could go 
if the water overflowed it would go over the top this does have a, an overflow as well but it's not needed because this is built in but this is actually adjustable on the height so you can actually make it go up and down to adjust the height to whether you need a built-in overflow or you don't and it also comes completely apart for servicing like that he says without breaking it so that's will stay in position as well so when i want to replace the actual washer in the future i can just pull it straight off and i don't need to do all the rigmarole i've been doing today so uh, that's the first thing now the water levels on this one you can see the two holes here with this cover so this originally comes here with a uh, six litre flush but you could actually cover that hole like that and make it a nine litre flush. Whereas this one has a slide. So there's a little arrow on the side here with some numbers on here, which tell us how many litres we've got on here. We've also got this partial flush mechanism thing here. It looked a bit complicated on setting that up. So that's the major differences size thread on the end but they are pretty much the same height now technically I could have just changed the washer on this siphon now these siphons are about a tenner you can buy them for less than a tenner I think the siphon washers are pennies and the new one I bought was 24 quid so uh, the cheaper option would have been to change the washer inside there which all I needed to do is push up there undo the hook allow it to come back down and that's technically what's left of the washer now you see the blueness on there now the thing what's killed this washer is the cleaner put uh, blue blocks in the toilet system so you should never put these blocks into the toilet system because it ruins the washer. And then uh, all I've got to do is take this retaining clip off and uh, <laughs> replace the washer and then put it back in. So that's pretty much what's left of the washer. So that's what I could have done, but I didn't. I bought a new one. So that's changing the diaphragm or the siphon washer. That's the main differences. So let's get this installed and get it fixed. So the new siphon comes with everything you need in this little bag. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the seal on. So the seal's got like a, a ring around it, like a rough end and a smooth. So the smooth goes to the bottom of the siphon like that. Now the next thing I need to do is actually hook it onto here as the water comes pouring out. So that just needs to go through this hole like that. That now goes and slots through the hole. I now need the retaining nut at the bottom and I can just start screwing that up because I'm getting water everywhere because the valve's still passing. And what I need to do is I need to make sure the siphon is in line here with the handle. So when the handle's pulled down, it actually keeps it perfectly straight. So it's not straining when it's uh, flushing. So I can now get my grips, place it on the nut and tighten it. Now when I tighten it now, I'm not going to over tighten it because you can end up, because it's plastic, if you're heavy handed, you'll end up stripping it. So that should be enough. So, all I've got left to do now is put the flush pipe on. So, what I need to do is I need to take off the old parts of it. So I've got some new stuff in the back. So we've got a new nut slides on 
and this time the washer is tapered so the taper goes to the top the flat to the bottom so that goes on to there slide it down a little bit to give us some room so we need to put that up into the siphon first and then slide that into the back of the toilet slide that back up so it's in there and then tighten the nut on and this time hopefully it doesn't get cross threaded now this only needs to be hand tight you don't need to put any grips on that but you can just keep nipping it up if it uh, if it does leak when you flush it so all I've got left to do now is fill it and check it so let's get it filled and let's get it checked now if this was a close coupled toilet the process is pretty much the same so you can see the toilet system is actually attached to the toilet pan so we're going to have to remove this system first before we can remove the siphon now again if your toilet hasn't got a built in overflow we'll need to remove the overflow first and we also need to turn the water off at the service valve we will then need to undo the nut holding the service valve to the float valve and then there's two screws at the top which we'll need to remove next we'll need to remove the wing nuts which hold the cistern onto the pan there's one on this side and one on the other side once we've done that we can then take the cistern off the top of the pan now we've exposed the bracket which holds the nuts to secure the cistern to the pan so we just need to undo the lock nut like we did on the low level toilet and we can take this bracket off now this bracket should be replaced and also the donut washer which goes on here as well which seals on here will also need to be replaced and then finally it's put it back together in reverse order it's as simple as that now all I've got to do now is remove the screwdriver holding the water closed and fill the cistern up with opening the gate valve. I am going to be replacing this gate valve by the way for a stop tap when I can actually get and turn the water off. So now what I've got to do now is make sure that my water gets to the right level before I flush it. I can now just check underneath and make sure I've got no leaks. So it's just a matter of now of waiting for it to fill up. Now, <laughs> water stopped filling, so we're at the right level, hopefully. So all we've got to do now is pull the handle and just check underneath and make sure we've got no leaks. Perfect. So, that is how you change the siphon on a low level WC system. Let me just quickly show you how this internal overflow works. So you can see the overflows there where the water level is. Now I've taken the water level quite high to show you this because it makes it quicker. And we've got no water going into the bowl. But if I press down on the water there, and I go back to the bowl, you can now see the water is overflowing into the bowl. So that's how the new overflows work internally and you can see the water level still nowhere near the overflow so that's how they work but it's all about setting the height of the siphon if you set it too high it won't overflow so if you set it to its lowest point it will be in a built-in overflow so if you've liked this video why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below if you've not subscribed to our channel then please subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because we release videos mainly on Mondays and Wednesdays all I've got left to say is thanks for listening thanks for watching and if you're watching this first time round Merry Christmas happy holidays and a very very happy 2021 cheers guys <laughs>